Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, going into episode two of this session, uh, we have settled on heading back east. Uh, you will probably notice off of the episode, the last episode of our previous session that we did a little bit of retcon action uh, just because, hey guys, we were all tired. It was really late and we thought, eh, let's think it out a little bit more. And plus we got some awesome sidebar action with Silas. So totally yeah. stoked when, about that. When we were so tired that we thought throwing a couple guys, a couple dead bodies in the back of the cart and then showing up at town was a good idea. <laughs> I didn't I even put him into blood. the fish barrel. <laughs> My, I have Sicilian blood, so throwing a couple bodies in the back of the cart is not big. You deal. didn't see nothing. You'll see nothing. Hey, Jimmy, how's the mom? <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, all right. So, welcome back. Uh, as you can hear in the background, we are in route right now to uh, head over to Melvon. So, let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, the camera opens up on our intrepid heroes returning to the city. Uh, they've traveled through most of the day. It's coming across to probably around 6 37 o'clock. So the sun is starting to set behind them. And the, the city in front of you seems well, much like you left it smoke and stuff billowing up on the horizon. I mean, that's already there to greet you. It just kind of spills out and mixes with the marine layer coming off of coming off of the moon sea. And the gates in front of you, uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 feet tall, or seem like some kind of foreboding barrier that says, you know, across this barrier, across this line, cross at your own risk. But... Um, you guys have been there for a while. You've stayed there for a few months, and so you're kind of used to some of the machinations going on in that place. <laughs> but this time, it's a little bit different. Uh, you're coming back to the city with uh, uh, quite a few events under your belts. And at this stage, as you get to the gate, you have a decision to make of who to actually contact um, with this new information you have. So to the gates you arrive, um, the, uh, the gatehouse, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, human that's there that, uh, steps forward. And as he's coming up to the cart, uh, we kind of flash back to the trip along this road, coming back to Melvant and the idea of trying to get the mules to go a little bit faster, giving them a breather, but then getting them to go a little bit faster. The expectation is to find the half elf somewhere along the road somebody on foot and probably wouldn't have been able to get there ahead of you guys but despite the fact that you guys have raced here to the gates unfortunately you haven't come across the half elf so what during that time would you have done in order to try and uh, keep track of this guy as you're traveling uh, tracking is what i do okay so we had footprints yep uh so I would just have, you know, and even if we had to leave the road, mm -hmm. um, I'd have stayed on the footprints. Okay. So, so it, I'd assume that if he's in trouble or if he's trying to get information to somebody, he's going to go straight to town via the fastest route, which is probably the road. Right. Okay. Um, why don't you do this? Um, again, still kind of in that brief flashback moment. Give me a uh, survival test. And because you've already found the uh, found the tracks on this guy, go ahead and do that at advantage. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Wow. So Silas, so when you're when you're out there, so I'm assuming you're hopping down from the cart and you're kind of heading moving ahead as you're giving the 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 mules a bit of a rest. Um, how do you go about finding tracks? Are you getting down on the ground? Are you uh, sifting through using a tool or some kind? No, you're just you're looking for signs of that somebody's traveled across. And if you're in the, the, if you know, I don't know where we found. I don't remember where we found the tracks, but I do remember that we found the tracks. Well, you found um, them. I mean, you found them they, leading away from head the, to the camp. Road? Yeah, you found them leaving, leading away from the campground or the campsite uh, where you found the dead uh, dead guards uh, or bodyguards, as they were, and they did end up on the road and started heading east. So, right. so yeah, just uh, the best that I can do is try to look for similar prints, okay. similar footprints that are fresh, mm -hmm. that uh, 
you know, haven't been overtrodden. Um, right. Okay. So um, along the way, but, I mean, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But I, I'm, I'm in no way like looking to follow track by track. I'm just looking for sign that we are heading in the right direction. Right. So with uh, with your 21, you're able to find out, like for the first half of the day, you're actually, every time you give the mules a rest, you hop down just to kind of make sure you're along the right track. You kind of backtrack a little bit and step forward and go and look. And you're, you're finding evidence of the signs that he's been leaving behind, you know, whether it's uh, a dragging a bag that he's dragging along with him or his particular boot print, that sort of thing. You're able to, to narrow that down with that particular role right there. Of course, um, you're able to find it now about three quarters of the way back to Melvon. It's probably around two or three o'clock. You find that the tracks stop and there is, looks like there is a combination of, hoof prints and tracks and the hoof prints are coming from the east coming westward but they stop there and they turn around and they head back east he, he met somebody so it's he met somebody that was on horseback there are no more what um, was there another there was not another set of footprints no it seems like his footprints he either his met sign an extraordinarily ends. well-trained horse or he uh <laughs> That's somebody on the road. Correct. That's correct. I I kind of want to just once we find that because obviously I'm assuming that we're all just trekking with Silas. Right. Um. I kind of want to just look at the scene and see if there's anything that sticks out to me that would either talk to even down to like the type of horse or you know what kind of thing went down if he just hopped on and they ran off or. Sure. Um. Yeah, definitely. I'll give me an investigation roll. Let's do that. Um, Kendrick, do you want to assist with that, or Silas? Either of you guys? Yeah, let's see. Sure, her. why not? Okay. Why don't we let? Um, wait, who's rolling first? Ugh. We got everybody. Okay. Either way, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess Baird with yours. Well, let's see what Kendrick. No, oh, no, Kendrick. Um, okay. Yay, so fair to Midland. <laughs> <laughs> Fire to Midland. So Baird, with your roll, it looks like you got a 10. Um, you're able to discern that, uh, yeah, it looks like the there's horse tracks that came from the west. It looks like they were going at a regular pace. Um, but one thing that you can kind of tell is that there was no scuffle here. So it because, was a friendly contact. Uh, it could be. could definitely be. Um, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like it was a a confrontational meet, meeting, but it does look like I mean, his tracks ended. It could in also a... just it could have also just have been. Now, okay, wait. I'm getting my east and west confused. No worries. Um, the horse track came from the direction of what city? Melvant. So from so the east. The horse was coming from Melvant, turned around, and went back. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's not just a passerby, then. That's somebody intentionally trying to find him. I have a funny feeling that, for some reason, either either that dude was sent to kill the two guards or was basically looking for an opportunity to ditch them and get back to, to Melvon. All very valid points. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have no choice. We just continue on. I mean, yeah, I, I have a funny feeling that either situation, if we go back to uh, Yublin, I'm pretty sure he'll have some kind of information for us. Because you always uh, put him out, out there as the guy who knows. He's the guy you go to who knows everything. Right. Like, he knows this town like the back of his hand kind of guy. Yeah, yeah I, like... I agree that we, we go to Yublin. Yeah, he's the guy with the uh, with the plan, right? Okay, cool. So either either he knows what happened, or he's heard something about what happened. Right. All right, good. Uh, let's see then. So, in uh, fact, I'm in fact I Baird will be intentional about going to find him because Baird remember threatened him when he sent us on the way because Baird kind of took him to task. Yeah, because. Uh, Baird 
saw that he knew something that he wasn't telling us and said, if we come back and we find out that you were lying to us, you're going to have to answer to me. Right. Now, what do you think, Baird? I mean, as far as the kinds of things that you guys have run into, do you feel that there's been any kind of any kind of deceit? I I think that the the, the second that the half elf ran away and the two guards that were guarding him are dead by a clear like cut across the throat. That's not a in middle of battle. That is a straight up assassination. Right. I I, I have a funny feeling that there's more to this dude. And the fact that that Eublin was being eight kinds of shady when we left town makes me think that he at least knows something about it. Definitely a possibility. Um, okay. All right. Well, good. I want to kind of get an idea of where your uh, where your headspace is at. Baird's pissed. To this. <laughs> Baird's pissed. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't last. Let's see what happens. So then that's going to kind of guide a little bit where you're going to go once you get through the gates. And that's where oh, we whatever. bring back. Yeah, that's where we bring back our uh, bring back ourselves to the present. So you guys arrive at the gates. The guardsman's coming up to your guys' wagon and uh, basically walks up and says, uh, oh, Good day. Do you have anything to declare? We got business with you, Blin. All with Hublin, do ya? Okay, are you on a list of some kind? Just tell him he owes Baird a debt, and he's come to collect. All right. He leans, but he looks back to the to the other guard that's there next to the gatehouse. He's like, uh, says his name's Baird for Hublin. So he waits a minute, and the, the guy goes back into the guardhouse, and then uh, a few moments later, he comes back, and he uh, he basically gives a wave. And then he looks up to the guardhouse and uh, gives them the signal, and the gates begin to open. So, yeah. Uh, Portcullis comes up um, because, again, you know, Melvon is situated on a very dangerous area. The most open area to get into Melvon is actually through the port. Um, but uh, these gates are pretty much held fast just simply because the Thar is right to the north, and the Thar is the dwelling place of everything orc um, and all the evils that go along with it. So, yeah, so you guys uh, bring the cart in through the gate. Uh, they don't give you any muss or fuss. Uh, you're, you're basically free to travel. So a um, couple places you could go. You could go back to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the inn in which you've met or uh, basically got the job from Yublin. Basha, you can sing your song now because I'm totally going to the Black Horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, the black horse is the one that's back in the other town. Remember? Oh, that's is that, the, that what's, yeah. what's the name of the What's the, the name town. of the one here? The one that we were hanging out. It's been a while since we've been here. It definitely uh, it's has. In, it's yeah, the it's devil's not. the devil's fire tavern. You can find it inside the handouts segment. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is where I'm going then. I'll push it out. The to last you guys so you the can last see place it. we saw you, Blin, is where I'm going. Okay. Now, um. Let's see here. You guys were in town long enough to kind of know also that um, there is a central market area, a marketplace, and you can see it on the map there. It's in that central open area. I'll ping it here. Um, that's where Yublin has a, a section all to himself, and that's where he sells his goods. He has his assistant, Eldred Pentwort, that's there. Remember the, uh, the overweight uh, undesirable that uh, Yublin's taken under his wing? But um, yeah. So, okay, so you guys head over to the Devil's Fire Tavern. And it's much as you guys remember it. It is a raucous crowd, even at this time. It's about 7.30 in the evening. Um, the Bear, sun Bear is... gets his hanky out and his like... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everybody get your sanitary napkins and uh, and all of the uh, Purell that you can handle. Um, did you just say... I did. I totally did. <laughs> Live with it. Live with it, okay? I... I people out there on the internet just look i make bad turns of phrase i don't so, think that means what you think it means <laughs> i don't think that means what you think it means nobody is cut open here we have bandages we do not need this um okay so you guys head over to the devil's fire tavern and there you are um let's see here kendrick give me a perception check please perception check deception no no uh, perception. perception. There it is. That'll be a perception check. 
โอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ
without seeing that, he's going to go right for Eldred and basically walk up to him and go, I'm going to need to see Ublin now. Where is he? So, uh, so Eldred, he's a, he's a human guy, a bit rotund, but he's on the short side, actually. He's actually only about a half a foot taller than, than you are, Baird. Um, he's drinking and like all of a sudden he sees, he, he gets, do you like tap him on the shoulder or do you just kind of lean oh, in and. Oh yeah. <laughs> I basically, basically I imagine it where, cause he's sitting down. So we'd probably be either same height or same ish height. Hmm. I imagine literally like putting the arm around him and like, like being all jovial with that, that like crazy smile. The, the <laughs> smile that says, I'm actually really, really mad at you right now, but I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay, so let's see here. So we're doing that. Let's uh, get things going. All right, and then Silas, what do you do? I'm gonna move to the back door. All right, Kendrick, um, what are you up to? So you're seeing uh, Baird is angling himself all the way I'm, towards. I'm gonna uh, actually the door. Uh, give a little elbow to Kendrick to have him come with me. Okay. There you go. We only need one person to intimidate Eldred. This, he, this is not a big issue. <laughs> I, I, go, I go with the halfling then. Okay. So you guys head towards uh, head towards the back. Um, so we'll stick with Eldred then. So Eldred is like, you know, we kind of flash to a, a, a camera angle with Eldred, and all you see is uh, he's looking down at his, his mug of ale, and he's looking at it, and it's empty, and he's looking at the plate next to him, and it's empty, and he's just like, oh, boy, I could, I could really take, take another drink. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, here comes here comes uh, 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 Baird, arm around the shoulder, nice and crazy looking in the face. And Elder's like, oh, uh, hey, look, mate, I, I didn't know you were, you were back in town. You're not due back for a couple of days. What are you doing here? <laughs> you can tell you, Blin. Because, quite frankly, he's the reason we're probably here. We met oh. we met somebody, probably a friend of his, oh. half elf boy. I don't know. What are you talking about? Did you run into trouble? Is is Ublin hurt? <laughs> oh, oh, he might be. I right, wait a second. Wait a second. Look, he's. He's on the level. He's not out to hurt you guys. He really likes you guys. He wouldn't have given you the job. So what, you brought everything back? Is that what happened? You run into trouble? Was it orcs? What is at, it? At, at this point, I'm literally... Because I'm still a cleric. I'm still a lawful good gentleman. Sure. But I'm also super pissed. <laughs> and if I go back to my character sheet, back to the backgrounds that we established, yep. uh, Baird does not know how to properly present himself talking-wise. <laughs> <laughs> Baird is not one for charm, so he's actually gonna do. He's actually gonna do a little bit of a grip, and I go, "Look, I know that you've been sitting at this bar since we left. I know you've probably heard some things. I know you've probably forgotten most of them. But what I do Crazy. know is you also know. I also know you know how to find Ublin. So what you're gonna do right now is you're either gonna tell me where I can find him, or you're gonna bring him here right now. All right, leave it out. You don't have to get all froggy on me. Well, now, well, I've been nursing a massive headache every all day. You don't have to do that. Uh, fine, fine. You want you want me to bring you to him? What would you prefer, man? Because he's still out in the market right now. He's closing up shop. I can take you there. Or, you know what? I mean, the, the back room's open. And they aren't going to be using that until later, I'm sure. You won't use that. That's fine, too. Whatever you want. Just stop yelling, man. So so basically, when the, the second he says that Ublin's still at the market, he goes, he goes, the market, excellent, and he just, I'm just gonna literally like toss him like a coin. He said, have one on me and forget this conversation ever happened. Oh, all right, man. Nice. So he like looks at the coin. He's like, you sure? Don't, <laughs> don't make me go back on it. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Look. Go easy, man. He's uh, Ublin's good guy. I'm He's already, I'm already out. I'm already out. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Take it easy. I'm already out the door. <laughs> All right. So which way are you going, front or back? Uh, which way would be the shortest distance from where we are to where I'm going? 
probably through the back door. Then through the back door it is. Okay. So you are you're you're kind of wrapping up your conversation there with Eldred and you're about to turn off and, and turn and stomp away. So the, we swipe over to uh, to Silas and Kendrick as they're heading down this hallway. So again, like I'm just kind of like I don't have the image of the bar here, unfortunately, but just to kind of paint you a picture, it bas- basically looking at the bar, for instance, like let's say this city right here is the bar. Um, so this right here is the common area. This right here would be where the bar itself is, and then right behind there is the uh, um, private room. And then where you see 11, 14, and 13 right here is mm-hmm. kind of the hallway that leads to the back door, and then the back door emerges out into the streets right about here. Okay. That's right. There was some rooms back there, too, on the way back to the... You got it. Like where the 14 and 13 are, that's where the doors are to those little private rooms. But as uh, Silas, as you're kind of following them out, and Kendrick, you're right behind him, Silas, you see the two guys actually exiting through the back door. They don't pause in any other rooms. Okay, so uh, you guys come out into uh, the uh, dwindling twilight of uh, the city of Melvant, and uh, you see them moving off uh, eastward down uh, one street. It's it's not a real wide street, but there's there's actually a pretty good amount of people out here as uh, as the the city starts to switch gears from business time to after business time. So what do okay, you do? so give me an idea of where things are in the city. The mm-hmm. uh, Devil's Fire Tavern is not on the map. That is correct, sir. Uh, let's see here. The Devil's Fire Tavern. Let me get onto the map. Is down here, where see where the number ten is right here. I'll yep. ping you. Um, if you go up and to the right, there's an L-shaped building right there. Yep. And that is the Devil's Fire Tavern. And so this road. Uh, Actually, you know what? You guys, you can also do like freehand drawings if you want. That that road right here is the road those guys are heading down to the yeah, east. Yeah, you got it. Here, I'll so do like that. there. There you go. So that's where they're going right there. And then the. Uh, the so Devil's they're Fire. heading toward the Aaron Manor. You got um. Possibly. And where is this? Uh... Uh, not entirely sure. Let's see here. The market is here. In the... Yeah, that's where the market is. I'm looking for number two for here. For some reason, my, my yeah, number my two is over on the eastern wall. Bit, but... Yeah, so that's this is where House Laren is. That's correct. So where I put that extra box. Yeah. All right. So, how do you want to proceed, sir? Are you uh, making your presence known, or are you guys trying to stealth your way in? And how are you giving information to Kendrick? Because Kendrick, at this point, hasn't spotted what's going on. I just kind of whisper to him as we're head out that we had, uh, but people of interest that uh, <laughs> snuck out when we walked in. Okay. All right. Cool. Basically, our, our, uh, our, can I draw on here? Is that are you guys seeing the things I'm drawing? Yes. Yeah, I'm seeing the okay. line that you're. you're Basically, we have a choice. We're going to either go this way, and this way to get to Ublin, mm-hmm. or we're going to go that way after these guys to find out if they're causing us trouble. Right. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So let's see here. I'm going to switch this over to that battle map so the guys at home can see. Um, okay. Ublin doesn't know we're coming, so let's go after the guys, the suspicious guys, and then we'll go find Ublin. You two can go after the suspicious guys. I am I am single-mindedly purposed. <laughs> All right. I was doing that too, but I didn't want to split the group. If you're, if you're good, you go that way, we'll go this way. First yeah, time, tr- play, first time, time, time playing D and D already knows. Don't split the group. Probably. Yeah, traditionally it isn't. It's a terrible idea to split the group. But if you ask me what Baird would do, Baird didn't see those guys, and he knows where Ublin is now. So, okay. according to the dice roll, I didn't see anything. <laughs> you barely knew we were in the tavern. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right, then. Um, so let's do this. We are going to go ahead and move on. Um, 
Silas and Kendrick. So your approach to following these guys, are you going to try and catch up with say them? And... Kendrick kind of more... uh, does his stealthy ninja thing, and I will stay well back. I mean, within sufficient range that I can be there in a turn, but uh, so that I'm not fireball range. Yeah, so I am not, which is a long range. Um, right. uh, but enough that I'm not disrupting his ninja stuff. Okay. All right. So Kendrick, go ahead and give right. me a stealth roll. Ninja roll, yes. <sighs> Tonight on Melvant Ninja Warrior. <laughs> Where's my ninja roll? I can't even find my ninja roll. Oh Check my your God. skills tab, lad. This is so bad. All right. Um, I am going to roll the stealth. Roll it. Here it comes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, mama. <laughs> Somebody got excited. I trip over some pots and pans. <laughs> so yeah, so what does that look like? So you're you're moving down the street, right? And there's there's people here, um, you know. Again, moving they're moving from work time to evening time, so there's a lot of transition going on. So it's like a, you know, a, basically like a, a a bunch of people out there. So you're trying to weave your way through the crowd, keep up with them. Silas, you're coming up behind. What does Kendrick do that like results in some form of noise happening? See, I'd like to think that he was going to do some parkour action, but he's a dwarf. Yeah, dwarfs don't, dwarfs don't do parkour. Hey, they can don't limit them. yourself. Don't limit yourself, my friend. No, no, but I, but I, I think um, I think what happened is that uh, I, I jumped on the back of a wagon to um, – Kind of both conceal myself and to move a little bit faster, mm -hmm. and the wagon takes a uh, strange turn all of a sudden and stops just coincidentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of, um, as I come around, I realize I'm even farther back than I was, and uh, okay. and I just make a mess of it with coming off and just okay. start grumbling and grunting. So as you, uh, so as you're coming down off of the cart, you uh, you get a a whack along the head as uh, the guy who's driving the cart turns around and hits you with the riding crop that he has. And it's this old guy with like barely a wisp of hair around here. It's like flyaway contrails, you know, and he looks down. He's like, hey, <laughs> what are you doing? Get out of my bloody car and you stay on the ground, dwarf. That's where you belong. And so at that point, when that happens, you look at him and then your eyes go back to your query. And one of the two guys is looking right back at you. <sighs> and a second later, they turn to run. I'm, 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 I don't even care what the old man says. I'm so mad at myself now. All right. So you guys decide how you want to handle that. We wipe over to Baird. Uh, Baird is uh, on a mission, and he's heading north oh, yeah, straight he for the market. So I would assume, Mr. Baird, that you are probably going to take one of the main roads going up. Whatever the shortest distance between the the tavern and the market would be exactly where he would go. Okay. So I'll have you probably heading up this direction here and then uh, heading over this way to kind of yeah. get your way through. All right. So, yeah. So you, you make your way through the crowd. Um, what's what's his personality like? What's your What's your tour de force right now? Uh, because we're in town, I haven't drawn my hammer, but he looks like he would want to. Okay. So that look. Like, I just imagine him like, like, like literally walking through town, pushing people out of his way. Yeah. Make uh, way for the bishop. No, no, yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe one hand is just entire, it, just the whole time is just clenched in a fist. Okay. Because quite frankly, the first thing he's going to do when he, when he sees you, Blin, Hmm. Is deck him. All right. So you you make your way through the crowd and you're coming out into the open market and people are starting to kind of move the stalls around. You've got the uh, the street vendors that are there who are going to start opening up stalls for food. Um, basically, they're cooking the food that they weren't able to sell, like the fresh fish and stuff they weren't able to sell. They're starting to put them into the fryers and they're starting to um, you know, broil them up, that kind of thing, so they can put them onto sticks and everything and start selling them to people as they pass by. Um, 
you make your way over to where you you know you will install. You've been there several times as you guys have collected jobs and that kind of stuff and worked with him. Um, you're you're moving you're making your way through the stall and we have like a brief flashback with with um, with Barrett and we start to realize that the the last time that you had a job let's kind of go into this one Barrett the last time you had a job with him he had you um, he had you taking a piece of like an artifact over to one of his uh, one of his forge masters <coughs> and he wanted to have that delivered to you and it was something that was really important to him and do you know like what what kind of what kind of piece was this what do you think something you could hold in your hand um well, I imagine if he gave it to me, it probably would have some form of religious significance because he's got plenty of guys just to transport stuff. Right. So it probably would be... Uh, I can't remember. What's the dwarf population like around here? Pretty high. You'd probably so, say that the... In, at least in my version of Melvant, the population is roughly around 35%. So then it would probably be something more than related because he would rely on Baird's expertise... Uh, so it's probably some some little icon, almost like uh, Morden symbol, the the anvil mm. symbol for Morden. It would probably be uh, some form of of talisman of that likeness. Right. Gotcha. All right. Cool. It would it would basically be something that Baird would would have knowledge of. Otherwise, he'd just give it to one of his goons. <laughs> Got ya. All right. Cool. Um... So you're flashing back to that memory, and as you're as you're kind of stomping your way into the market, you you recall the the joy that was in the guy's face when you delivered this implement to him, and you you recall a phrase that he says in dwarvish because it's, it's a fellow dwarf, um, and the the dwarfish phrase is basically saying, if if not for if not for his if not for who he was, I would say he was a dwarf simply based on the fact that he kept his word thank you and so you he kind of takes the the piece back into uh, into the building and uh, passes you a, a small pouch and uh, in you know maybe curiosity or whatever or Yublin opens it up for you inside the pouch is actually like a little toy um, a, pe a, a like a toy object like a little wooden carved toy and Yublin looks at it with with almost kind of a glint in his eye and uh, he gives you a pat on the shoulder and gives you a big thanks and then moves on with his day and sends you on your way. So you're kind of thinking about that briefly as you you go into town. And, and the thing is that with your personality, I mean, you're so strong and you're so single minded. It's it's almost kind of like a fleeting thought in the back, but it kind of like rushes along your subconscious. And as you get up to uh, you get up to the. Um, to where his stall is normally located. You see him um, at the stall right now. He's not closed down anything. It doesn't look like he's packing up, but he's basically uh, uh, sitting there at the stall waiting. And he sees you coming up and I wanna have you, uh, can you give me an insight check? Oh, I'm actually pretty good at, at insight. Yeah. All right. The dice good. both tell me good rules, and then the result is just as I saw. Very cool. He is uh, he's frightened, but he's not frightened of you. Hmm. And one thing you know is that Yublin is as close to clockwork as a halfling can be, but he has not yet shut down his stall. But he should be shutting down his stall. He should already be on his way to doing it, or if not already done. All right. So instead of decking him, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm 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 just going to walk up to him, and I'm kind of going to do one of those push him up against the wall things. Like I'm mm -hmm. not going to hurt him, mm -hmm. but it's at the same point I still want to make it crystal freaking clear right. that I'm not happy with him. All right. And I'm basically going to look, and I'm kind of going to I'm going to, in light of that that knowledge. I understand that something shady is going on. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to just like, like get up real close and go, look, I don't know what your, what your deal with all this is, but I know somehow you're connected to this. Remember what I promised when we left the city. If I find out that you were setting us up, you'd have to answer to me. So here I am, and I'm going to tell you that what we saw on that road, I, I saw it. I saw your face when we, when we went through that, and I know you're involved somehow. Tell me what's going on. He, uh, he looks at you, and he's, he's basically just kind of like, you know, like you've got him pressed up against like part of the uh, support thing that holds up this like heavy canvas tent. Um, and uh, he's got you, you've got him up against it. And he says, look, I, I didn't mean it. Lord, I, there was nothing that was underwood. There was nothing that was underhanded. I, I, there was nothing I meant to. I told you everything that I could. I told you everything that I could, and and then the the second he says that 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 I told you everything that I could, I'm gonna be like, well, now you're gonna tell me the rest of it. And as you kind of lean in close, his eyes, you see his eyes flicker to the right, and your eyes flicker to the left because you're kind of close, and you see an arrowhead sticking out from the shadows of the tent flap of his tent, and it's aiming right at Yublin. Dun, dun, dun. And we'll uh, we'll go to break right there. Um, so, guys, we will uh, we'll be back. Next episode will be coming up shortly. Don't worry, uh, we'll get get this out to you in a couple of days. But uh, thanks again for uh, being a part of this. We're having a load of fun, and you guys are ready, right? We'll, we're not gonna cliffhanger you too long, but uh, yeah, we'll be back shortly. <laughs>